fantastic. Mm-hmm. Thanks on success. We got a great guest for you. We're going to be talking about building a business on Amazon, a private brand, private label brand store. Uh, please help me welcome Neil Twa. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on the show. And uh, it's a pleasure having you on the show today. I'm excited to talk about this. This is one area of uh, of business that I think that uh, would be a good opportunity for somebody who has some capital and wants to do some investment and build their own uh, online store. Uh, why don't we start by getting a little bit of information as to who you are, what you do, and how you help your customers. Yeah. So in short term, we have been building private label brands for quite a long time now, over 10 years, uh, specifically focused with the starting block of what I call incubating products on Amazon, FBA. Uh, fulfilled by Amazon using their systems and infrastructure to help deliver the products to the customer last mile. So we focus on the products, the marketing, and the mechanism of branding, and we let Amazon take care of the customer. And it's a pretty good symbiotic relationship, and we've done pretty well with it over the last 10 years. Yeah, it seems like a pretty turnkey environment as far as, you know, taking your investment, uh, getting your capital together, and working with you um, hand-in-hand on how to build a, a personalized I guess a, a private label. Mm-hmm. Private label. Yeah. I mean, private label is to, to clarify the differences, maybe so people understand some of that. There's there's white label, which is kind of a product that's created and I slap my logo on it and I put it on a website or Amazon or somewhere else. And there's wholesale and retail and arbitrage. That's product flipping, you know, taking someone else's brand and flipping it in an arbitrage format. Uh, that is not the most profitable and, and can be kind of a, a, a harder model, more of a job based, uh, mecha- you know, mechanical model. In fact, one of the largest uh, sellers of that model on Amazon just went out of business because their margins weren't enough and they couldn't raise enough capital to keep it online. So we work in private label where we're able to create organic and intrinsic value in the brand and emotional connectivity of customers to the brand uh, where our prices are a little higher. And of course, our profits are higher. Uh, giving us more sustainability in the business, uh, more cash flow uh, and profitability, and of course, the ability to grow and scale the business. So what's the first thing that I need to do to get started? Well, in simple terms, you need a product. Uh, It's one of the most critical uh, things that people need to understand about getting started. It's a question that we always make sure we pose back, and that's what the blank do I sell. Uh, It came off of a consulting call I had years ago from a gentleman, one of the first people I ever coached in, in the market on how to sell. Uh, beyond myself. And we got down to the call and he's just like, okay, but just tell me what the blank do I sell? Uh, Products on Amazon, there are uh, 600 million of them. Uh, In the last 10 years of selling products or ourselves and our clients and building a database algorithm that basically tells us which of the products competition, uh, good profitability, low saturation and big upside potential should we focus on. And that's only about 6% of those 600 million products. The other 94% are going to be kind of more race to the problem, pricing, lower profitability, or aren't going to meet our threshold for wanting to grow the profit and grow the business big. And so we focus only on those products. So taking taking the idea of what I want to sell, yes, is there an approach to that? Is there a way to make sure that the idea that I have with regard to what I want to sell can be viable? Absolutely. It- yeah, there's two ways to go about it. There's what you know, product research, okay, by identifying products and determining their upside, whether or not they're in demand, what kind of person might buy these products. It might be you. It might be somebody in your family. The best way you could initially get through the concept of of first level product research is to just go to your Amazon account and look at the products you bought over the last 90 days. Uh, If you understand what Amazon tells us, about 70% of the products on its platform are sold by third party sellers. That means roughly seven in 10 of the products uh, that are in or have been purchased by you in the last 90 days came from a third party seller. So one of those products is something you could potentially sell. The answer then relies in the numbers, right? Is it profitable, right? Could I actually sell it profitably for myself and build a brand around it? And usually there's a 70% chance you can. Yeah. And so as far as promotions and all that stuff, promotional type stuff, marketing, advertising, where does that come from? Is it something that you guys assist with or, 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 I I mean, is it being advertised on Amazon or is it being advertised elsewhere? So we, we have a saying here in the country, keep it very simple, right? You can't, ride, you can't ride two horses with one ass. So we focus predominantly on Amazon for the first 12 months only. We want to move that channel as high into multi six figures or up to seven figures uh, as fast as we can before even consider, you know, considering other marketplaces or ever advertising outside of Amazon. So the advertising we do is all within inside of Amazon's ecosystem. We helped set that up. There's a, a artificial intelligence management system we use, and we help the templates 
uh, that we've learned to use the most uh, correctly, set those up for our clients and make sure they're running and that they understand how to run those. And then for the most part, it's automated uh, in the management of that within Amazon. Uh, from the product selection, I mentioned going out and doing the product research and stuff. Our clients, we can skip that product research by simply just giving them the products and showing them why those products, why that competition, why this profitability, and then helping them source those products. Um, let me give you an example of how that could look like. So the Amazon system is a giant search engine. It's actually one of the third, third largest search engine in the world. I think almost the second. I think YouTube is third now. Amazon is second behind Google, if, I, if memory serves me correctly. Um, the end result is product-based e-commerce search engine. It's not just an information, it's a buy search or search and buy. So they are there to look for a product they want to purchase. They've done their conversation, their due diligence somewhere outside of Amazon. They've gone to Amazon to look for that correct product. So Amazon has its own mantra, sell anything to all people in 30 seconds or less. So it's all very much geared towards the buy. It's one of the reasons why we really like it. The end result is, what is the engine doing to help you out? Well, if you are going to compete with a brand new brand, Amazon's a really great place to start because there's existing products and brands that are on there. We have a saying, similarity plus, plus familiarity equals trust. Amazon system and leveraged trust means we can take a product that's similar and create a familiar product to the one that's already selling on Amazon, innovate that product, right? no inventions, we don't need to go get patents, but we can innovate that product. We can brand register, even trademark the innovations and then go back to the market and compete for customers already buying the existing product. We can compete on different value, different price point and other metrics. Because of that, we can put our products in front of people very quickly. I was up late one night with my daughter. I have four daughters. Um, they were all four. Uh, all four were born in four and a half years. We had an instant family. Uh, and because of that, I was up late night with one of my daughters feeding her a bottle somewhere around three in the morning and the infomercials came on. And one of the infomercials was for this, uh, this product. It was a pet product in the kid niche. OK, and it was uh, called Seat Pets. And there were this plush doll. And, you know, here's this new baby. And I got two others in the other room because they were all really young. And I'm thinking, what a cool product that would be. You put the seat belt through it. Their heads don't fall over when they got the car carrier. And it's this cool little animal looking thing. They had this stuffed dog and a penguin and. Uh, these other animals and i thought hey that's a really cool product i wonder if we could sell that there's an infomercial so clearly they're putting a 500 to a million dollars into an infomercial they must believe they're going to be able to really sell a lot of these products went to amazon realized they didn't have very good listings they were relatively new that product really wasn't in the market very much and i thought huh there's got to be an opportunity to take advantage of that market share ethically steal from their advertising through amazon so we went out and created an innovative product we called ours belt buddies we made a product, we transitioned it just a little innovation. My partner brought this to the table because his son was big into anime at that time. And he said, hey, what if we take the characters and we put just a little anime spin on their eyes and their face, make a little bit more round, a little bigger eyes, and it kind of has that anime look. And I thought, well, that's pretty clever. I bet it will sell, let's go find out. So we ordered 2000 units and we just put them up on Amazon. No marketing, just listed them on Amazon, had some really great images done, made a really nice listing and put it up in the marketplace and they said, let's see what happened. Well, about eight days later, we sold 2000 units. We had ethically stole the traffic <laughs> away from their marketing and just simply out marketed them on Amazon. We ordered another 2000 units and this process just kept going. Uh, we eventually sold that brand, but the deal was we just innovated a product idea in something anyone could do and something we teach people how to do in its most basic and simplistic form how to innovate existing products that already have a customer demand, get your product in front of them, leverage the power and trust and authority of Amazon for something no one has ever heard of before because no one had ever heard of that brand. Man, that's awesome. It's super exciting. Like I'm excited and I'm not even in on the <laughs> There's some inner complexities and I want to talk about some of the cons too. I don't want to just put pontificate on pros because I know a lot of people do that and it feels like Lamborghinis and beach cars or whatever, beach houses and stuff. Uh, that's not how this all works. There is work to be done in this business, right? Uh, obviously, we had to have those manufactured. So we have a sourcing and manufacturing uh, division that has a global supply chain behind us now. After 10 years, we've established millions of dollars of supply chain and global distribution all over the world from the U.S. to not just China, but India and Bangladesh and all kinds of places where we can get products of all kinds manufactured. And so we're able to create those products, sample them, and then test market them relatively quickly in you know 90 days or less and determine the viability of the product and the market and whether or not we should put a lot more capital into the growth based on what the numbers are telling us. So we go by the numbers. We don't guess. We know 80% confidence, just like I did with that product we created, that it's going to sell in the market. The other 20% comes from actually putting it in the market and letting Amazon tell us the numbers and the data and seeing how close we are. 
And so, yeah, you will do some testing and what I call micro investing in products to determine where those winners are. We happen to hit a ringer on that one, but you may take two or three test products into the market. And then Amazon's literal technology and artificial intelligence will simply tell us which one's most in demand, which size, shape, color, type, variation. So we launch those relatively quickly and we test them and simply follow the gold vein when it appears. Uh, as they say, cream of the crop rises to the top, right? So if you're just gonna launch one product in Amazon, you're not giving the engine a fair shot. If you're gonna launch variations and multiple variations of that product, you've now cast a wider net and you simply let the engine determine for you and tell you where the most customer demand is for the product that moves through. It's a lot easier when you do it this way. Are there, are there better ways of doing that? Like as far as research is concerned? Are is there better ways of, to? Yeah, well, yeah, instead of launching something and putting some money behind it, is, it, is there a research aspect to it that will- Oh, well, there's a scientific research. The database of those products have already been predetermined based on a, a bunch of different data points that our algorithm has pulled back for our best sellers and the products we've sold over the last 10 years with our customers. We've done more than $100 million in sales in 10 years between ourselves and our clients. Our data is extremely strong. So we're going to micro invest. I mean, like, you know, 50, 100, 200 units into each of those variations. We're not going for like 10,000 units or $50,000 buys in product we've never tested before. We're going to do micro testing into those. Now that all of them will sell, it's just a question of sales velocity, which ones sell faster. And the, the engine and AI will help us determine that. So we have all the data ready to go to market. We just need the market to validate for us. But this is not going to dip into other people's profits, right? Whose profits? Well, like, well, you have a, a customer base, right? People that you're helping as far as. Uh, um, oh, in terms of us competing with them? Correct. Right. No, no. Each builder that works with my team is registered into a specific area in Amazon for those products. So no other builder with us can compete because we are going to work with that client to become the top dominant competitor. Maybe there's six, seven, eight already in that niche. We're going to become the, the top or second to the top uh, brand domination in there. So no other builder within my group will sell those products that, that are in our um, database. They're registered. Uh, makes sense. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. No, because we're going to so compete together in the market, <laughs> not against each other. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. uh, what type of investment would I be looking at if I wanted to start a store or if I wanted to start uh, working with you guys? What yeah. So if you wanted to start a store and you're really going to just go out on your own, I can tell you after doing this for a long time, spending millions of dollars and making really terrible, stupid mistakes. Uh, that early on almost cost us the entire business because we didn't know what the heck we were doing. Uh, you want to deploy the, the known amount of capital or knowledge necessary to overcome what most businesses fail at in the first year. And that is the wrong knowledge applied incorrectly and the wrong capitalization. Okay, There's two forms of wrong capitalization that can occur. Under capitalization, meaning you did not capitalize correctly or, or go to market with enough war chest to actually be a serious competitor and reach the kinds of numbers that everybody really wants to do when you get in business, or you're simply overcapitalized and you become complacent uh, in your execution and your ability to go out and do it is determined by uh, certain time constraints or other things. You simply didn't put it because maybe you got enough money in one area and you just simply didn't put the focus. So there's two variations of capitalization problems that can occur. And finally, knowledge. Knowledge is a big component. You can go out and do this on your own, but you can potentially take years and hundreds of thousands of dollars to figure out what will cost you um, $35,000 in one year to work with us. Uh, we're going to guide you through big mistakes. I mean, you can make a $20,000 mistake in the wrong product. It's, I've seen it happen many times with people who go out on their own. I'm going to help you deploy your capital correctly because the game for me, what's in it for us as we go, is the exit in the business. Okay, The business is worth more at the end than any time during the business building phase. We're not talking about revenues. That's just vanity and Lambos. Don't care. Okay. We're talking about profit. That's sanity. <laughs> okay. Cash flow is king. So we want cash flowing, profitable businesses that have an upside potential to exit in 24 months because I'm going to help take those businesses that make that mark and I'm going to sell them to my portfolio's group of investors who wants to buy these companies. They need to be profitable and they want to buy them. So what's in it for Voltage? It's the exit. What I'm doing up front is qualifying people serious enough to build the business, push it through to the exit and then have the chops to do that part of the business model. OK, um, we build, we do our own brands, we do uh, our own businesses, our software and divisions that we have. So we take five, seven people per month, roughly based on qualifications and application process to come along and do that with us. It's like a franchise kind of model uh, to do this, but I don't take ownership and I don't want profit sharing from anybody. You own everything, you keep owning everything. What I want is you to build a business with me that has an exit potential for two to five times what it's worth in 24 months. That's what I'm really interested in because that's where the real money is made in these businesses. 
So what you need to do to really deploy capital to answer your question specifically is around 25K in the first uh, 90 to 100 day, 20 days in the way we're going to deploy capital. Okay, if you're going to go at it your own, you better have two to three times that because you're going to make a lot of mistakes along that way in that capital deployment. I'm going to make sure it's deployed very uh, specific and into specific areas of product and testing um, to make sure you're not breaking the bank doing this. Yeah, I mean, you definitely want to be efficient and provide the most viable products. Um, yes, correct. I'm curious to know, like if on the exit strategy. Yes. Are, are you guys providing the buyers? Oh. Yes, we are either going to look at it ourselves first, or we're going to provide a buyer who's interested in the business. As part of that, similar to a real estate deal, we're going to be a broker in that. All right. There's a, usually an average industry commission of 10% to broker that business deal that's paid for by the seller. We bring in the buyer. We're going to negotiate on the behalf of the seller uh, to ensure the profitability is up. To, we are going to be helping run the business through the, uh, the segments with the buyer as they go through the learning process and growth process. So we're going to know the business well. We're going to know who they are and we're going to help rep that business for maximum exit potential at time of sale. Man, that's pretty cool. That's a new revenue or uh, a new stream of revenue. That's a, it is a new stream of revenue. That's, that's what's in it for me. I know everybody wants to know what's all this and why are you charging and stuff like that? It's like, really, I want to sell the businesses. I have pipelines and other business acquisitions I'm doing beyond this, but it's fun to take a few strong go-getters, tenacious business people who want to open a new channel and help them learn how to do it correctly. And because they become part of my network, right? They become part of the, you know, network is net worth. That is a true understanding of people who know what business is really about. I'm building my network. Some of these people are very good at what they do in other business lines and other life and other connections and other network. And I met some really amazing people who wanted to learn how to do e-com and didn't want to screw it up. So they hired us to help them do it. So I'm curious to know, I mean, so once you've built the business, obviously, you guys are on top of that. I love the ideas that you guys are coming up with, with regard to, uh, you know, the, the, you know, brokering and building the business. Uh, I'm only assuming that you've already got some sort of training course involved or in the works of it. Um, but if you, if you, what is the incentive to sell? I mean, if you're generating revenue, you're, 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 right. you're you know, what is the incentive to sell if you're, if you're generating this revenue? One word, inflation. Money today is always worth more than money tomorrow. If I can take a business out to 24 months and return 24 months of profit back to me immediately, that money is worth more now than it will be in 24 months. I will take that capital and put those soldiers back to work in a new business faster and easier than I did it before because now I have the full knowledge and more capitalization and I can repeat that process over and over again. I call it the platinum principle. Okay, in the corporate world, they call it the golden parachute, right? Our platinum principle is build a business, create a second brand, sell the first one, ramp up the second one, and just repeat that process like a multi-franchise, multi-real estate business uh, strategy. Very similar to that. So you once you get going in this and realize there's so many more products than you can do in an entire lifetime, you will have more brands than you can possibly launch. And you, once you have the capitalization and knowledge to repeat this, you can do it over and over and over again. And I have done that for the last decade, and that's what I teach people how to do. The beauty of it, go ahead, sorry. So you recommend that people invest, build it, sell it and then reinvest in another business. Go right back and do it again because you'll do it even faster and bigger the next time because you'll have learned the mistakes you've made. You'll know how to go faster and do it easier and you will have all that opportunity sitting right in front of you more than you can possibly tackle in a lifetime. So what happens is people get a little frustrated later on because it's not going as fast and they want to put more capital in and they're still waiting for products and logistics to move. And so they're like, let's go, 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 because they really want to capitalize on what's working, which is cool and fun to watch. And we will open multiple channels beyond Amazon. So Amazon is the first place we go, but understand this is e-commerce, right? This isn't just Amazon selling. That's why it's not a course. This is mentoring. It's business mentoring to start with, number one. It's focusing on e-commerce, number two, and then business and merging and creating a multi-stream of income, three, because you can make almost automated income off of this. We're talking about 10 to 15 hours a week minimum to learn how to do it and how to maximize it even at seven or multi seven figures, even with no virtual assistants, no employees, no warehouses, none of that infrastructure. This is a lifestyle driven business. It's what we've created that allows me to live on 40 acres in the country and homeschool my daughters and do pretty much what I want and only work with people I wanna work with. And if that's of interest to you, then that's what we're talking about. Is it passive? I think that word gets thrown around way too much, Abel. Uh, what is passive? Passive is that unique lottery mindset idea that I will just make money doing nothing. And that doesn't happen for a lot of people. It's not really how it works. What happens is you do some work. <laughs> the object is to maximize the time in which the profitable time comes out of that. If you understand trading time for money, 
anything you're doing beyond an hour of your time is making a lot more money for you because you're not realizing you're setting in a poverty mindset. You're one check away from everything basically falling apart. This is an opportunity to create multiple streams of income. And even at almost automated income, I can run up to 10 brands right now with all virtual assistants and operators and have no infrastructure supporting that. And Amazon is my infrastructure along with third-party logistics companies that hold the product and wait for Amazon. So you need the money, you need the capital to double down in case something doesn't pan out, right? So are, are there any other downfalls? Is there any other risks involved with this? Well, of course, there's, there's risks in every business model, right? I mean, there's there's known risks in the e-commerce real estate market right now as things start to capitulate a bit and the, and the prices go down and inventory is harder to get. In e-commerce, there are similar risks to just like any other model. We have a supply chain problem right now. We have slower than uh, than we would love products that come to market. However, we can still get fast boats from locations that take you know two weeks to get here. Air freight, in some instances, is is as cheap now as it was to ship it on sea. So some of our products are coming across air because it's just not any different in the numbers than it was to ship it on the boat. So some of these things have simply changed, and we've adapted. Um, the cons are. You know, you give up. The cons are you don't find a product immediately that you know makes all your dreams come true, and you maybe get a little frustrated because you're not patient, waiting for certain aspects of the business model to go through. Because there is a bit of patience in this game uh, to finding the products and getting them moving. The cons are that you don't listen and you spend way too much money on products that don't sell, or you don't listen and sell products that shouldn't have a, or don't have the right amount of profitability, and you don't follow the numbers. The risks are also not taking any action at all. The biggest risk is simply not doing anything. That's true. The people that take, take risks are the ones that, uh, you know, they profit the most. Yeah, uh, risk and reward, right? Take control. Sure. Take control of your finance. Take control of your business. Take control of what's working or what's something that you actually have ultimate control over, something that's less affected by other conditions that you cannot influence, like your boss or a business that just sees you as a number. I was that guy at IBM. All right. I was the serial badge 58127B. And when I was done with, they were done with me, that was it. Like I didn't have any, that was a talk about fearful stress and lack of control that that was more risky now than anything I've ever done to date. Man, that's, that's crazy. But I'm, I'm really, I'm proud of you for, for stepping out and doing this and helping other people and, and really working Thanks, the, ideas and, and coming to and having this come to fruition. It's uh it's really, it's really, really cool. Thank you. I appreciate um, that. Very kind of you. The end of the podcast? Yeah, for sure. We're getting close to the end of the podcast. Uh, is there anything that you think, people should know right now that uh that i haven't asked you is just something um that that maybe people should know right now well i mean in a world of, of change and dramatic change in the last few years we all have felt some of the insecurities of certain structures that we've known for decades have kind of been this way and that really changed for a lot of us in the last two or three years so i mean in terms of risk it may be scary to try something new but it may be scarier to stay where you are right now <laughs> so i mean my final word is if you're going to try something feel the fear and do it anyways all right i'm building i'm building a line from susan jeffries if your if your belief is that it must have 100 percent absolute confidence in whatever i'm about to do then you're never going to do it okay when i launched my business after i left ibm everything fell apart in the first year and if I had literally not, if I had known the outcome of that, I may not have done it, but the fact of the matter is I did it anyways. And there's not a perfect time in any of this. Everything is kind of flipped upside down. I mean, in that first year I got married, my wife got sick. She had to quit her job. I had left IBM and didn't have the income. We went from very high incomes to no income in one year and a baby on the way. And my wife was sick with something we were trying to figure out in that first year, which was very difficult. So we ran into all of those problems and I could have had every excuse to just go find another job and, and, and curdle back from what I was doing. The end result is, you know, right now you may be tired and not inspired. That may be really your biggest problem. And you're not having fun, you're not making profit and you're not doing it with good people. If those are things you want to change, then maybe it's time for us to have a conversation. As the saying goes, when the student is ready, the mentor will appear. Well, I may be here and you may be there and maybe we need to connect. I don't know. That's up to you, but you can find me if you want. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, how can our listeners get a hold of you? Let's get said. Well, real simple. I got a short name. So if you really want to, if you want to do some due diligence and find out whether I'm legit, just Google my name. It's N-E-I-L-T-W-A. You won't miss me on Google, DuckDuckGo, or any other favorite search engine. Uh, you'll see all of my social media. If you want to get direct information, go to VoltageB2B.com. There's a free presentation with myself and Kevin Harrington, who's a partner in, in Voltage Portfolios, uh, which is the acquisition division of what we do. Uh, you're welcome to check out that presentation and learn a lot more about the details of how we approach the business and the model. 
if you are specifically ready to talk and you want to say, okay, I want to know what's up with this guy. Let's have a combo with me personally. You can just text ABLE to 417-413-4209. That's just DM me text ABLE, A-B-E-L, to 417-413-4209. I will personally respond to that text message and we'll have a quick chat. We'll find out if we're a good fit or not. Awesome. Awesome. Well, there you go, guys. Anil, Twa, it was a pleasure having you on the show today. You're an inspiration to me and our listeners. And I'm so glad to have had you on the show today. Thank you, sir, for having me on. Yes, sir. All right, guys. Neil Twa, be sure and check out all the information that's going to be in the show notes. Check that out. Uh, check out creativeentrepreneurship.net for all of our articles. Check out tcepodcast.net for all of our social media. Be sure and subscribe there. tcepodcast.net. Be sure and check that out. And uh, we look forward to seeing you and hearing from you in the comments. And until next week, keep on keeping on.